Today I'm going to show you PowerShell on Mac OS X. This was just released today. Some pretty exciting news if you follow PowerShell. And Microsoft just open sourced it today, August 18th, 2016, basically the core PowerShell and made it cross compatible with both Linux and Mac, Mac OS X. So today I was I downloaded it and was kind of kicking the tires on it to see what you see what I could do and you know what worked and what didn't. And so I'm going to show you that which I'm going to share that with you guys today. So right now I'm in the Mac OS X terminal. I've already downloaded and installed PowerShell. And in order to step into PowerShell, I need to run the command PowerShell here. And that will step me into the PowerShell application. And I have the core PowerShell functions and commandlets. So if I want to take a look at what those are, I can use the git command commandlet. And I'll go, go and type uh, command type. I want to see the functions and the commandments. If I just ran this without doing that filter, it would also show me all the native Mac OS X applications, which I don't want to see right now. So if I run this, there's actually quite a bit of you know PowerShell functions and commandments built in here. Now this is just the core, so it doesn't have everything, but it has you know your test test path, which is a pretty important one. I use that quite a bit. And it has you know your your out commandlets, your new commandlets, new object, new PS session, which I'm not sure if that works yet. Uh, this is in the alpha release right now, so it's not even beta. And I don't believe the PowerShell remoting capability um, works yet because I don't think there is um, either the capability of using WinRM right now from PowerShell or SSH. So if I scroll up here, you know, get member right here, I can take a look at the PowerShell objects, uh, all your format list, table, all your standard ones, as well as your exporting. So I can export, you know, data to CSV, CLI, CLI XML, and also I have the convert to, so I convert text to JSON and then export it using out file. And pretty much all the, you know, core commands that you would expect to be in here. So I'm going to go ahead and clear screen, and I'll go ahead and start as an give an example with the git process. And now it ran, it's showing me all the processes on my Mac, which is not all that exciting, but the fact is this is running on PowerShell, and this is not your native Mac OS X PS command. And what do I mean by that? This is a PowerShell object, which means I can do a bunch of object manipulation. I can access certain properties, I could do sums, I could run um, all sorts of things without really using you know text manipulation tools. And so for example, I'll just go ahead and use PS and we'll use AX to the AX switch there to show the processes using the native Mac OS X. And it gives me some information and you see it gives me the PID here, the ID, and then I could run kill to kill that process. But if I really wanted to sort things, I would have to use um, some text manipulation tools such as awk, sed, and grep. And just to prove to you that this is text, I'll go ahead and pipe that to the git member commandlet, or gm for short. And you'll see indeed that this is a string. So there's not a whole lot I can do with it in PowerShell per se without using some of the other string manipulation tools. However, using the git process here, I can pipe that to say um, sort. I can do the sort object commandlet and sort the CPU in say descending order. Now that's actually accessing the property, so I'm not doing any text manipulation here. And then I can select say, do select object, the first five. And that right now shows me the top five uh, processes used on my system, which terminal happens to be it right now because I'm running PowerShell. Um, and there's a lot of cool things you can do there. And as well, and I, if I wanted to, I could output that to maybe a file, save it, export it as a JSON file, uh, whatever I really wanted to do with that. But I'm going to go ahead and show you using it to kill a process. So I can do git process. I can also use the wildcards here. So I'm going to type in SAF here, and that'll pull up hopefully Safari. Well, sure enough, I'll see all the different um, processes that meet that criteria using those wildcards. But I'll go ahead and use the git process. I'll type in uh, Safari. 
make sure I get that correct process. And if I wanted to, I could then pipe that to stop process. And I could use the what if commandlet to show you what that would do. And it tells you it would stop this Safari over here. But I'll actually go ahead and use the power the object method to do that instead. So I can either save that to variable, or I can just surround that with parentheses here. And now I'll be go I'll be able to access the properties if I wanted to. I can type in CPU, and it'll give me the CPU. Or I can also access the .NET method, so I can use the kill method. And if you look at the Safari on the side of my screen, that'll go ahead and go away. So that's kind of a shows you an example of using the object um, side of PowerShell to you know get the processes on my Mac and you know manipulate that. But with the built-in, since this is only the core, you're quickly going to run into well, there's not a commandlet to do something with my user accounts, create users, get users, but there's nothing stopping you from creating those and you can formalize it and save it to a module. I haven't tested that yet to see if that works. Or you can save it as a script and run that. So one of the first things I did, I created actually first was a hello world to see if I could do that. I made a function and that worked. And then I decided, well, there's really no good way that I know of uh, to really manage users on Mac. And so I'll, I thought, hey, maybe I'll see if I can just get a list of user users kind of using a PowerShell function and which where it's more familiar where I'm more familiar with so what I did here I created a function I'm in uh, by the way I'm in Visual Studio Code which they also updated their PowerShell extension so I can now not only author PowerShell scripts and modules within Visual Studio Code which is cross-platform I can also run the debugger and debug PowerShell code now which is pretty cool so I created a function here called get local user and you'll see then what I do is I save the users to a variable. And now keep in mind what I'm doing here. I'm running DSCL command. This is a native Mac OS X command. So the great thing about PowerShell is not necessarily what all the built-in commandlets and all the stuff that's in PowerShell. It says pretty much what's considered as a glue language. Where within PowerShell, I can access other OS X commands in this example to pull information and save it to a variable. And then I can use awk and sed and all these other text manipulation tools to filter data right within PowerShell and if I wanted to I could write the, I could you know access Python and Perl and pretty much any other language that I wanted to all within PowerShell which is pretty neat so I'm accessing all the users I'm basically create, getting a list of users using the DSCL command which is kind of cryptic in comparison to PowerShell which is what I'm used to but I save that to variable and that's a list of all the user accounts. Then I loop through, because that's an is a array right here. Then I loop through that array, which is all the usernames. And then I go ahead and use the DSSCL command again to access more detailed information for that user. Now this is not very efficient at all, um, but due to my lack of skills with um, you know awk and sed and grep and all these other tools, um, this was a quick, easy way to show this and kind of give a proof of concept. But this could be done in a much more efficient way than what I'm doing right now. So now that I get this detailed information, what I'm going to do is create a new PowerShell object using new object command, and then I'm going to create all these properties. So there'll be a property with the name of the user, and then I'm going to have a display name property, unique ID, home directory, and I could add more. There was uh, more properties I could add if I wanted to. But you'll see here I took that detailed information here, which is just a bunch of text because that's what that command returns is just a bunch of text. And then I use the built-in OSX commands such as grep and awk to actually get the information I want and I'll save that to the property of that PowerShell object. So to show you that in action, I'll jump over here and I'm in the correct location but I'll need to step into PowerShell and I'll show you, let me see, ls, there is the file get local user PowerShell script which has the PowerShell function get local user. So I'll need to dot source that. This is the same as what you would do in Windows. Or if I wanted to um, formalize this a little more, I could save it to a module. I'll run that. Now that is in my PowerShell session. So that function now lives in my PowerShell session. And I can type in get local user. And when I run this, you'll see it 
gives me all the local users with those properties that I created. Now again, what's great about this is it's an object, it's not just text. So I can do something like this, say I just want to see the name. Select, if I can type here, name, and this will give me all the names. I also can use, you know, filter. I can say where the property name is like, and I can use the wildcard. So we'll say has a B in it. And this gives me all the user accounts with the name B in it. And ideally, I would probably build some other commandlets, and maybe I could do this, say remove local user. And then I basically filter what I want, and then I can remove those users from my system. So hopefully you kind of see the uh, possibilities here. And um, I'm just kind of exploring this uh, PowerShell. This is in alpha, in the alpha stage, so it's very early on. But uh, pretty exciting news, and uh, I look forward to uh, making a lot of uh, commandlets for Mac OS X. Thank you for watching.